watch in the history of... I'm How many episodes over. is this? I'm going to start over. <laughs> Welcome to Crazy Hank TV, the greatest rewatch in the history of rewatch. We're rewatching Lost again. If you haven't, if this is your first episode you're turning, t- tuning into, we started this with the pilot. Ralph was there the first uh, first week with Axel Foley. We discussed pilots one and two. Now we're moving on to all the best cowboys have daddy issues and whatever the case may be. And we're joined by Ralph again and Chris in Boston. How's it going, guys? Whoa. Fantastic. How are you guys doing? Good. I was doing better before I started the intro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I kind was of, doing kind better of... <laughs> until I got to whatever the case may be. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know how Ralph, if you if you watched the pilot, ep- our first episode, you know how Ralph got into loss. Chris, how did you get into loss? What was your your deal? So I, I, I didn't watch it straight from the pilot. Um, that was not how I got introduced to law. So I was, um, at the time, this is going back to like what, two, I forgot what year it was. It must have been 06, maybe. Anyways, I, I was working, uh, my job at the time and I was traveling, uh, for training and stuff. And I, I needed some stuff to keep myself occupied while flying and staying in hotels and so forth and so on. So I Netflixed, if you guys remember, Netflix actually sent DVDs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I Netflix the entire first season um, of Lost, and I just crushed it on one trip. My my training trip, I think I was in San Jose or something. I forgot where the hell I was, but I um I watched the entire first season on my on my trip out to the West Coast, and I was completely hooked. Like it, it just sucked me right in, and then I found out about well. Shoot, you guys, really? Yeah, the Darmalars and Jay and Jack. That that's what that's that was what in that order. Yeah, in that order. <laughs> exactly. um, well, so you, that, you've always that, you've always been wrong, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's what really kind of kept me, you know, so ingrained into the lost universe was um after having like mainlining the first season, finding out about you guys and going back and listening to your shows for the first season and then just getting completely engrossed into the whole uh, lost universe um, by listening to you guys week to week and watching the shows. And back when we actually had to watch shows week to week and couldn't binge them. <laughs> um, but that that's kind of how it, it all came to be. And through all of that, that's how we all be, have become, you know, friends over the years. And, um, and for those who don't know me, I, I, I do host a show with Jack um, outside of crazy Hank TV um, <laughs> Ramblecast. Ding ding, um, the, R- the RCAD. Yes, Ramblecast after dark, um, and I've gotten to hang out with Jack and and and, and Ralph over the years at Comic Con and other events and stuff too. So it's it's been kind of a really cool, unique show that's kind of not only piqued my interest for creative creatively, but um, has really kind of opened up a lot of doors and started a lot of relationships, which is pretty cool. That's the best thing about Lost, really. It really Lost. is. It all, it's that bond between everybody, that everybody has. It's and everyone has a different story about how they. Get, so you didn't start till two thousand six. I think that was it was. Yeah, cause it was the first season was available. So wait, it started in 05, right? Oh, it four, was oh four. Oh, four. Then it, it was whenever the first season came out on DVD was when uh, I was able to watch it. So I really can't pick on you because that's when I started too. So there you go. I start. I, I started after the first season. I started at week two, week one. Nice. Whenever they showed, I had a job. Whenever they had the encore presentation of the of the pilot, a friend told me you got to watch the show. And uh, yeah, I looked on the DVR or on the the guide, and it said they were doing a reshowing of the pilot. I said, well, if I'm going to watch it, now's the chance. So yeah, there you go. Uh, you and know. all those people that messed out, all those people that either gave up on it. Or, or just never got around to watching it. Missed out on the best community ever. I mean, it. it yeah. I, 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 I've talked about it before. I'm, I'm probably on this this rewatch where you have. You mean you look at uh, like teams that are, you're a fan of, the, like say a, the Patriots or fans of the uh, of a sports team like the Angels, and you get people that, fu- that, that actually fight each other. They'll yeah. actually, you know. You don't get that with Lost. The thing that's funny is, and I notice this every time we do a panel at Comic Con, is that there's even if people hate certain episodes, um, 
let's say further instructions uh (laughs) let's say people hate episodes or hate like the finale or something uh they still show up to comic-con because they still uh kind of gravitate towards the positive of of -hmm. everything um watching the two episodes that that we're talking about today uh i really enjoyed one over the other and um i mean i've always i've watched these shows uh, like a hundred times but for some reason this time it's like oh i don't want to sit through this story but it, I still found like some enjoyment in it. I was um, the same way. There's, there's just some stuff that I was like, it, I feel like the more I watch it, the more I get nitpicky. But um, what's funny is I didn't realize that uh, the first episode we watched has one of my favorite um, go to unanswered questions slash abandoned storylines. And I'm not, I'm not one of those guys who's like, Oh, they don't answer all the questions. Um, you can watch the entire series and any question you have, you can go in and interpret, uh, and come up with your own conclusion and Mm -hmm. someone can come up with a different conclusion, but I think they're both valid. I think it's kind of nice. I think it's what keeps us watching lost is, uh, we could watch it on multiple viewings and come up with new stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. in this one, in the, in the, uh, every you want to start with every cowboys. all the best cowboys have dead but, issues? But it has the one thing that is always my go-to. What what's the deal with that? Is the um is the uh Hurley saying that back home he's known as somewhat of a warrior. <laughs> and I feel like <laughs> I, I thought you were like, gonna go I thought you're gonna go no. a different direction. I, I, that was no, not what I was thought you were gonna that's say. That's my go-to, that's my go-to unanswered question because it's like no matter how you spin it, like <laughs> clearly he wrote they they wrote that line way before his flashback, and it definitely feels like an abandoned storyline. Like I don't know if they set him up to be like a lucho or something, you know, or or what. But like there, there's been, a whiteboard somewhere that yeah. has the mysterious background story well, about you, about Jorge. You podcast with Jorge every other week, right? <laughs> I've never asked him about it. Well, yeah. why? Because because it's fun. I, I thought you were gonna go with how how come the others had superhuman strength. Something I brought like that. that's another note I took. It didn't occur to me. Uh, the warrior thing I've always since day one. I'm like because it took so. I wanted a Hurley flashback f- since the pilot, and it took so long. I think right. uh, the Hurley episode's like 16 or 18 or something. I believe it's, so. Yeah, it's really late in the season, and so that was like one of our little glimpses into Hurley's backstory. And that stuck with me. I'm like, Ooh, I want to know why he's considered a warrior back home. And then it never happened. And so that's like the one, when people complain like, Oh, it doesn't make sense that, you know, this happened or that happened. I'm always like, yeah. And they never explained why Hurley was a warrior back home. I always took it more that he was, he's always in, especially the first season, he was more like comic relief. Yeah. That it was, it was for the, it was for us to go, you know, kind of chuckle and go, okay, I wouldn't. Uh, I don't know. He seems dead serious about it, though. <laughs> I seriously, like, I want to see this, this well, alternate you need, version. Well, well, why don't you ask him? And the next time you're on, you can tell us what the uh, answer is. I mean, I'm going to just assume, I'm just going to assume that it's a, that it is just an abandoned storyline. He might not even <laughs> remember the line. I, I mean, I'll ask. I can ask. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> you got to ask now. <laughs> and place really him? Him in the tournament too. Should I text him? Here, you guys talk amongst yourself. I'll yeah, t- text him and ask him what's going on. I'm going to have to uh, well, I, I did want to start. I, I did start off with Hurley tells uh, the group about Ethan. We're left on a cliffhanger on the last episode. So he finally tells him he's not in the manifest. But someone, it was, uh, I think Boone said, well, how, maybe he gave you, he, he gave you the wrong name. Yeah, maybe he's not telling the truth. Or no, Sawyer said that. Sawyer said that to Walt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll well, talk yeah, because Walt Walt goes up to him in in uh, that's like halfway through the episode. There are yeah, I, yeah, I was going to say that, but anyway, right. Uh, but then you have Jack. We'll go back to that. Jack and Locke are running through the uh, sprinting. Now, uh, here's my my issue I have with Locke. Locke was in a wheelchair for what four years when yeah. he crashed on the island. I mean. I couldn't sprint like that. 
Dude's going to have crotch rot from sitting in that, that wheelchair <laughs> for as long as he did. And he was like Carl Lewis going through yeah. the Amazon he was, jungle. He was, he was faster than Jack. Yeah. And knew and stopped on a dime when he saw uh, Claire's bag or was it as it was a Jack that saw the bag. It was like their bag. Yeah. Well, no, Jack didn't see anything. Jack just kept no. running and, and yeah. Locke had to stop him. And what do you think about that, uh, Ralph? You think that uh, the island gave Locke super endurance and superpowers? Well, I mean, it fixed his legs. So he's obviously <laughs> doing better than he was. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, it, it made him a super dick. I know that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> man, he really... He, there, there's a line. I, I think it's this one where he tells Michael that they're heading north. So why don't you head south? You head south. And I felt, I was like, I was like, is that slightly racist? Is that? I think you tell him to go to hell. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't know what it was, but I was like, he doesn't, he doesn't really, like him. It's really yeah. mean. And I was like, oh, Locke's kind now, of an a hole. Does he not like Michael because Walt was telling him? I think he associates Michael with his dad. You know, all Walt knows is that his dad was not, a, that Michael was not around for him. And what is, of course, we know that Locke has a history of his, he has daddy issues. So is that the reason there's friction between Locke and Michael? Well, I think it's either that or the fact that Michael clearly does not want Walt hanging out with John. Well, I, I get that, but, I, but there's just more, there's just, there's just, there's just something there. And I think, I think, I don't think Locke respects Michael. Yeah. Maybe he is racist. Could be. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe the island makes you racist. It could, it could be. It could be. Uh, but uh, so going back to the Locke Jack thing, we have, we have this, what's going to be a long where they're butting heads. You know, Jack wants to keep going. Locke says, no, we got to get a search party. Let's get organized. And Jack says, no, we got to keep going. We got to keep going. So this starts the whole butting heads things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. like So why would you actively choose to have, um, um, I'm sorry, what's his name? Uh, Boone over Michael. Like Boone sucks. Like he's young and impressionable. <laughs> maybe? Like, like what, what does Boone have to offer on a hunting party? Essentially. Right. He was, I he mean, was a lifeguard. I think, uh, well, I, from Locke's point of view, he's probably just figures he's young and impressionable. He's kind of dumb and eager and Locke could pretty much use him for whatever he wants. Uh, also Locke has some sort of a connection with Walt and probably feels like it's probably, uh, Michael's best interest, um, into making sure that Walt's safe. Yeah. To be fair and be fair to, to Locke. And I don't often defend Locke. <laughs> Michael went with him on the boar hunting party. Uh -huh. And, and Mike, Michael became, they had to carry him back. Kate had to carry him back because he got gored by the, the boar. That's true. Oh, yeah. So I'm thinking, yeah, you're just, boar, you're just thinking, you're going to, you're going to slow me down. Well, what was, what's, what's the only evidence he has? Michael did slow him down on the first one. Right. All right. Cause he couldn't get out of the way. Fair enough. So I'm gonna back up. I'm backing up Locke on this one. Yeah, yeah. Man, I like again. I don't I'm always back up Locke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was an awkward scene though. Cause you have you have uh, when he says, "Yeah, we're no, we got enough people. I don't want anyone slowing me down. Go south, uh, you know." And then you have Walt going, "Yikes, yikes!" <laughs> that was awkward. Because actually, Walt was making. Why don't we use Vincent to track yeah. him? Yeah. But he was uh, he assumed that that Vincent was a bloodhound. I don't know how labs <laughs> work. Like I don't know what labs they're... are kind of dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but it's still a dog. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Fair. yeah. I, I it was funny because it went, you know, I, I watched this episode for the first time um in probably fifteen years, right? Mm -hmm. Uh maybe you know, ten to fifteen years since the last time I watched this season. And um, the, and I completely forgot about the what happens later in the episode. But when but when Boone steps up and says, "I'll come along," and I was like, "Damn, he's a red shirt. He's a total red shirt." And they bring that up, and they yeah. totally bring it up. I was like, "I'm like, yes, he's a freaking red shirt. He's gonna <laughs> die. No, he's not gonna die." Not but then then Locke's response is, "Sounds like he's a bad captain." 
Yep, exactly. And, then, and so, so Boone ends up dying, which means Locke, Locke is a bad, bad captain. Locke, bad captain. Well, yeah. You know, and I remember talking about this at the time. I I, I know people haven't even seen Star Trek that know what a red shirt is. Yeah. Yeah. How does Locke not know what a red is? He too busy talking to Helen. He he's into like games and stuff. You would think there would be some crossover with Star Trek. Yeah. Plus, it, it's since 1966, so yeah. he's old. He's probably he was probably older than me. At that, so I don't know. I, I'm questioning whether he, I think he did know what red shirt meant. Mm. Huh. I'm not back and lock on this one. I, I I think he was crazy on that one. <laughs> but Locke did make an I got a backup lock when Locke is talking to Jack saying, Look, we got this. There's people, you know, Saeed needs attention. Why don't you be the doctor? Yeah, we, we would want to lose the good the one good doctor. Yeah. Did, why don't you yeah. do that? And that makes sense, but it's almost like Star Trek going back to Star Trek, McCoy always went on the missions. Did you <sighs> okay? I have an update. Okay. Uh, so the response is, uh, from Jorge, uh, he says that it was an abandoned storyline. Uh, he said, basically he thinks it was going to be something like a D and D reference. Nice. Uh, okay. So that's kind of cool. All right. That is kind of cool. All right. He's right. like Leroy Jenkins. What, 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 what should I call him? Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> World well, of Warcraft. Cool. We got that. Close enough. Cool. We got that update. That's great. Um, now we don't have to wait. Now we have to have you back on the show. What's funny? What's funny is like I never talked to him about Lost. I don't think it's very rare. Um, and I know he's a fan of the show. He loves the show, but it's we never talk about it. It's funny because uh, I've known Jorge now longer uh, as Jorge than I did before lost like you know what i mean like right i've i've we met him in like i don't know maybe 2008 which was like 11 years ago and so it's like yeah it's like weird when i watch lost uh hurley isn't even jorge like they're two completely separate things like if people want to like hang out with jorge you're you're not going to be hanging out with hurley like it's right hurley's definitely a character it's really funny um yeah. but uh but yeah, that's really cool. Uh, what's funny is about that is um, we on October fifth, I think, we, we start our first D and D campaign. So nice. Yeah, I'm in a I'm in a D and D group <laughs> with him. Uh, but but yeah, we just created our character sheets. I haven't played D and D in forever, but uh, never played it. I never yeah. played it either. It's, it's a uh, game that I, I'm I'm pissed that I never got into because yeah, I think yeah, I would yeah. totally dig it. Well, they have a thing now called D and D Beyond, and one of the things that it kind of takes the complications out of it because you used to when I used to play, I would sit there with the guy who is the dungeon master, and he would sit there and ask you a bunch of questions and fill out a character sheet for you. So it'd give you the, it's a big old long drawn out sheet with all mm -hmm. kinds of different things on it that are attributes and weird fantasy things that you don't really understand. And you get the sheet and you're like, okay, cool. Uh, they have it now where you go in and uh, you could do it like on your iPad and you just plug in the different things really? that you want to be. And it says, well, I want to be a paladin. I want to be, uh, I want to, you know, uh, be a warrior or whatever. And you just kind of plug in. You're like, oh, I want to carry. I, I got this thing called um, uh, oil of slipperiness just because it sounded funny. <laughs> I don't know what it does, but it's in my pouch it's or lube. whatever. So, <laughs> so it's like, it sounds like a porn movie or something. <laughs> I know. It's going to be great. I'm going to slip what in I've the heard, tight caves. From what I've heard. From what I've heard. <laughs> you slide into tight caves and get the booty. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a. Uh, but if you if you want to play, I mean, now is the time to do it because you just can just look at it and plug it in, and it's free. That's cool, man. So that is cool. It's interesting. It's interesting. I, it's been a really long time, and you kind of have to use your imagination because it's essentially the dungeon master is just telling you things that are happening. Like he's a narrator of a book, and then the rest of the people decide what your characters in that book want to do next. But you don't know the outcome. So if you face up against a monster, you don't know how many hit points it takes. So you guys got to like keep on. <laughs> it's 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 kind of fun, but 
I mean, you really have to like. I, I've learned a lot from, for, about it from Stranger Things. Yeah, you kind of need to just accept that you're role playing in fantasy. Like, it, it, but I think if you're with a gr good group of people that are willing to have fun, yeah, go for it. So nice. It does sound like yeah. I have fun. Nice. <laughs> Do you think? Well, so so, who would be the best Dungeon and Dragons player on uh, the island? Hurley. Um. Hurley. No. Or Locke. Locke. Locke? Oh, I think Locke would. Locke mm. plays board games. I think he has kind of a. Uh, I mean, this is essentially what Lost is is Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> like, I'm sure, I'm sure there's Dungeons and Dragons that are based around Lost. Like, it's it's one of those things where, well, you can get a group to go into the jungle. Uh oh, now you're face to face with a polar bear, and the dungeon master will tell you it's a polar bear, but he won't tell you how many hit points it takes, and so you know you get around to each player decides what they want to do to this polar bear and then you get uh uh sawyer says i want to shoot it with my gun oh you have a gun <laughs> okay cool yeah shoot it with your gun he rolls the gun or he rolls the dice and the gun shoots just like a power level of two because you rolled a two <laughs> and it then it just hits it but it doesn't kill it so he rolls again and he does a, a power level it's like a rolls of five and so it's like, oh, cool, cool. It's a little bit stronger. And then he finally rolls like a 20. And that's enough hit points to take out the polar bear. Just so dominate. in the show, he shoots the, he shoots at the bear three times. And <laughs> yeah. So, but before you go on this journey, you could create this character sheet. I'm John Locke. I I'm carrying a knife and a compass. And uh, An I'm good. Peel. I'm good at I'm good at hunting and <laughs> I'm good at hunting and tracking. Uh, I'm Saeed. I'm good with electronics. I can do this. So you create Dude, that Lost character. Lost is Dungeons sheet. and Dragons. Yeah, Lost is Dungeons and Dragons. So I guarantee you, there's a campaign out there, a Lost campaign, uh, for, uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons style. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to get, if you want to play Lost, like you get to be your own character, but you get to make them up, and you can like, say, what's I, have in the hatch? Power, I have a superpower. I have superpower. Like go down exactly. The hatch. Holy I, and, crap, dude! And you Lost use, is Dungeons and Dragons. You use all your tools to try to open it. And then Hurley, and then they show up. Well, I think there's a cave over here, or I know another character that has dynamite. Let's go get that character. And there's a there's a creepy figure hiding inside the the, and, the hatch. And you have to make a weird accent. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, and as a group, you have to decide. And if you're the Hurley character, you say no. I don't think we should open it. So it's it's yeah, lost the dungeon. Right, so it, so if there's not a campaign <laughs> for Dungeons and Dragons that's We're dedicated started. or, or themed as lost, I think that you would be the perfect dungeon master to come up to with that campaign. Yeah, I mean you can go you can go through do it season by season. Do it. Yeah. I got two kids now. I can't I can't find time <laughs> to put that together. But yeah, that's but essentially I'll, I'll what Dungeons it. and Dragons is. <laughs> except I can play it's, it. Except it's like dragons and monsters, and <laughs> there's a smoke monster for crying out loud! It, yeah. Yeah. Dude, yes, yes. I think we're getting people excited. You could say you can say like Locke has been pulled into a hole, and then Kate <laughs> rolls her dice. Kate rolls her dice. You know, I will go try to save him, and if she rolls like a high number, then she has enough then, power to pull him out then, of the hole. But because Ralph has got his oil of slipperiness, he's able to slide. <laughs> <out. Yeah. laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Well, and so, we digress. <laughs> speaking of funny, uh, I love Sawyer and Walt's conversation they had. Yes. Yeah. I thought it was, a, it, uh, you forget how good Locke, uh, no, Locke, Walt was on the show. As a kid actor, he was pretty, he was pretty talented. Yeah. So <laughs> I, he was going, I, I just like the whole conversation was funny. And because usually Sawyer's, a, he goes, yeah, making up your name is that's just stupid or it's just dumb. And he sort of gives that look like, oh, well, you know. And I, I just, <laughs> I, I love that scene. And then we find out that Hurley owes Walt twenty thousand, playing backgammon. Yes, you'll get it. You'll get it. And you think we're he, like, at we least can we all assume out. he did, right? Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Well, he's the, at least we found out that wasn't a throwaway line. Yeah. He he did have the twenty thousand to give to him. Yeah. And that's the thing is we, you know, a lot of people say, I was thinking about the conversation. We're talking about the red shirt and that's a bad captain. And that's exactly what happens is Boone dies. And then, I mean, spoiler alerts spoiler. for the rewatch people. Uh, but he, and then that's locks 
coming to realize he's a bad captain and he's him trying to struggle with that. And the only reason he's a bad captain is because he's obsessed with this hatch. And now it's like, he's already gone too far down that rabbit hole and he's too, he's too preoccupied with that. And, and I think, he, I think it showed in his flashbacks. He, he would have been a bad captain no matter what. Yeah. He just, he, he would always took, I've always thought Locke would be, he's the soldier. You want him as a soldier. Yeah. But as, as a leader, I wouldn't follow him into battle because he, he just, he just, he doesn't have the, the chops for it. He's just not, he's just not, yeah. he's just not the guy to go to. Who would, he, who would you follow into battle? Saeed? Well, he was on the losing side, right? So uh, uh, I, think, I, I, think mean, that, I think that's a joke in the, in the, in the show. <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't think Jack is too. No, Jack is too. Uh, these two episodes. Okay. So I haven't been rewatching. I just watched the episodes that were, that we, we did. Did we already have the storyline where Jack is too tired and Kate drugs him because he hasn't gotten any sleep? No. Okay. Okay. So we're getting there. Like yeah, this is because I'm like, man, Jack is really irritable in both of these episodes. So that must be coming up. Well, Jack, Jack's problem is too. He's emotional. He, and you can see why. I mean, his, his dad always put, you know, you can see it from his backstory that why he's emotional the way he is, but he, uh, he, you know, he, he, he wants nothing more than to protect lives. Right. At any cost. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care about himself. He just wants to make sure and we find out later that he just needs to fix people. And we saw it from his first flashback when he gets up to help his friend. The guy's like, stay down, Jack. Stay down, Jack. Yeah. And he gets a snot kicked out of him. And his dad's drinking, you know, scotch and watching Carol Burnett. Yeah. So, so that's Jack's <laughs> biggest flaw is he's too busy helping other people. He never thinks that he needs to fix himself. No. Which he. And that causes every single one of his relationships go down the shitter with the exception of Vincent, who <laughs> is all he's left with in the end. Mm -hmm. well, we heard from Chris labs aren't smart. So yeah, just stayed with Jack because he didn't they're know lovable. That, right? <laughs> Man, they're dumb. It does make sense why that labs aren't smart. <laughs> <laughs> and going to some of those, before we get further on, go to some of the flashbacks. We find out that uh, Jack's dad had a few drinks. Uh, Christian had a few drinks. Uh, had to be yeah. called. Uh, Jack takes him out of, you know, but the patient ends up dying. Mm -hmm. And then Jack, uh, this, and then Christian gives him this, you know, Hey son, you know, this, that, and of course, Jack with his compassionate. He's he's believe. he's way compassionate. And the moment when you when he decides to change his thing is awesome. The reveal where he finds out that that she was pregnant at the time right. is just like that that shot of him sitting there struggling with it, and then he just kind of snaps. He snaps yeah. out of his 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 thinking and then he just goes into it. He he's great in the flashback. He's a little too amped up for me on the island stuff. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, especially next episode. But um, I thought that moment was really great. Like it, you could see the tipping point. You could see he, he, where he becomes like full on, like, like he's 100% emotion based. Well, like said, compassion based. He's going against his dad, even though his dad is, has been. His dad said, "Well, I've been hard on you. I had to be hard on you." But his, his dad was also a jerk to him a lot. Yeah, it just, I mean, so. It, but to, it's still his dad. But like you said, when he found out she was pregnant, boom! It's like he's very no. Yeah. You, you're not. You're not getting away with this. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're you not. Could, not kind of, it was that reveal of like you're kind of like teetering on is Christian really a bad guy. Or is he just, you know, and he, he kept it from Jack. Like he obviously kept that information from Jack. Right? Yes. Yeah, so that, that's that, that the moment first time he's you, hearing about it. Exactly. In in the middle of that hearing and, he, and he, the moment he reveals and that, that you're right is Ralph, you mentioned, he just, he snaps. And that's one of the things where I, I remember when I was watching it the first time I watched it, I was like, Oh, dude! I hope you say something, man. Don't just sit there. <laughs> you gotta yeah. say something, and he does, and you're like, "Damn, there it is, game yeah. over." Well, in the first flashback, we find out that Jack's mom blames Jack for his dad having going to Australia. It said it's your right. fault. Well, we obviously this is what it was. His, yeah. his dad got his his, his uh his uh license suspended, and he couldn't be as you know be he's top you know top of his field. And now he's 
nothing now. And that's right. what's kind of great about the show is that if you're paying attention, you can fill in those gaps. Yep. You know, they don't right. they don't show you Christian getting fired. They don't no. show you Christian leaving. It's all from the perspective of Jack. And so, you know, what's nice about the show is that it doesn't baby you. And I think that's one of the things where people complain about not getting answers. It's just maybe you need to rewatch and fill in the gaps because he's right. even, uh, you know, like I said, I've seen this. At, I've seen Lost all the way through at least 10 times. Um, you, every time you watch, there's something that you kind of pick up on. Um, but one of the oh. things that's in this episode that I thought was kind of babying the audience, which I don't remember seeing in any other Lost episode, is um, when they're going around looking for Ethan and Charlie, they find uh, his his finger yeah. tape with the L on it. And they do a flashback of Charlie writing on his on that tape. And it's yeah. like, oh, well, I know what they force are. Fed. Yeah, that one was force fed, but I, I th it's early enough in the se in the series where they probably realized after that, like, oh, maybe we don't need to do that. Like, I thought well, that was so weird seeing a a, 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 a general like a flashback on the island. Is that our first on island flashback? Is yeah. is yep. him well, seeing those uh, then doing those finger? I, I never thought about that, but we've talked about it before, where they, you know, this show was picked apart. They yeah. probably realized after season one, okay, we don't have to do things like that. Yeah, this people are paying attention. Is, they're paying attention. They're smart enough. We don't need to go, oh, that's Charlie's. You know, he was writing on his uh, fingers. I never thought about it that way. But, yeah, you're right. that There was no reason to force feed us I feel that. like if – and it says they pick it up, and it's either Locker or Jack says, oh, these are Charlie's. And I'm yeah. sure someone in the studio – or in the editing process, they're like, people won't get it. Show the flashbacks. Yeah. Cause, cause on set, they say these are Charlie's to let the audience know, you know, we understand. Like we got yeah. it, but, but they, I know for me, it was that I, extra. I, I probably remembered it because I watched the first 14 uh, episodes straight. Yeah. I binged 14 episodes straight through. So I probably saw the whole thing. So I was mm -hmm. able to put two and two together. But, I, you know, going back, this show didn't have to do things like that because, yeah. again, you know that you, yeah. you do see things like that all the time. Um, but I did, I, I did like the the scene between Jack and his dad was uh, I thought acted well. But both actors were tremendous. I mean, it's just yeah. the, the the tent. You could feel the tent. You could you could see the almost the hurt from uh, Christian when he's like, "You're my son. You're supposed to back me up." And also the fellow doctors it's, thing, you know. But it's like, dude, you like me. You yeah. just took away a, a son or daughter from, and a and a wife, right? Mm -hmm. From someone else, like that's unforgivable. Yeah, right. Like our relationship, it goes beyond our relationship. Our, our our their personal relationship. This is a this is a business relationship at this point. Uh, you messed up. You have to. Pay, you can't just not pay for this. But even before that, Christian, you know, he goes, "Yeah, the nurse. They came, got me at the restaurant. You were here." Why didn't they come get you? They wanted me. Yeah. I mean, almost yeah. at that point, you're like, well, why is Jack being loyal to him? This guy's doing nothing but slamming him. That almost sounds like something Jack would say, too. That kind of attitude. Yeah, that's true. Like he, he does that kind of stuff to lock a lot. Like, how, like, what makes it so easy for you to believe? Like, you know. Right. And, and like, you see a lot of that in season two where I feel like a lot of Christian Shepherds sort of attitude comes out through Jack. Um, I love John Terry. Yeah. <laughs> John Terry's great. I loved he, him in ER. I loved him in uh, The Living Daylights. He he was Felix Leiter. He played Felix Leiter. I don't, I don't think he watched Lost, though. From what I've heard, I don't think he watched Lost. He never watched the show. Yeah, I mean, he kind of just... Everything. Yeah, he kind of just pops in here and there, but... And then all the scenes are pretty much with Jack. There might be a couple scenes with uh, Claire... Yeah. For the most part, I mean, I'm sure he got his full storyline. Like he understands his his story arc uh, isn't really uh, surrounding the entire. You know, there's so much other stuff in the show, right? That doesn't even pertain to his. Well, character. A lot of actors don't watch their work, so it just. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's, uh, Maybe you know what he's probably watching this rewatch along with you. He's it could be, you know what? I heard Crazy Hank TV is doing a rewatch, and I hear he's going to finish it this time. That's maybe the I'll, episode maybe I'll watch that I get along. fired. 
<laughs> he goes, maybe they should do an ER rewatch when I'm on the first two seasons. Is it first two seasons or first season? Oh. I don't remember. I love I loved his character on ER. He was uh, he was like played a psychiatrist yeah. on ER, and he kind of loses it at the end. He kind of he breaks. Yeah. He kind of crumbles. But anyway, moving on. Uh, uh, we have Ethan tells Jack to stop following, or I'll, I'll kill, kill one. one of them. I'll kill yeah. one of them. Uh, which brings us to the, the how is Ethan carrying both. I think even Locke says, is it Locke or Jack says, Jack, right, I think car he's carrying both of them because he's dragging them and one's yeah. pregnant. How is he able yeah. to do that? Yeah, it, it, mm. it, it's clearly sounds like it's set up that Ethan is some, has some sort of superhuman strength. And that's what we all thought. Yeah. Um, I don't, it, it, it could be an abandoned storyline. Uh, it's, it's funny. Cause like, I feel like, you know, a lot one of the complaints that people have about lost is it, uh, it feels like they're just making it up as they go. Um, and my response is always, well, yeah, they're making it up as they go. It's how you make TV shows, right? <laughs> you make it up as you go. Um, but this, yeah, this feels like an abandoned storyline too. Um, I don't think we get anything in any of the Dharma flashbacks that leads us to believe there's have any kind of super strength. Right. Uh, he's like a mechanic. <laughs> he does like repairs around Dharmaville, but it's not like he's like out there lifting weights. Well, he was a doctor though, right? Uh, yes, he was using a doctor. A, yeah. He's he using assistants. Well, I, for some reason, I, I was thinking of, I think it's a season three opening. He does get introduced to Juliet and he's on the side of the, the, the house, like, uh, fixing something and Tinkering. she says Ethan and then he gets up and you're like oh it's Ethan um, <laughs> and you realize oh it's Island and you see the plane crash and all that stuff I, maybe I did I don't know I, did. I don't know but he yeah, I think he was a doctor I think you're right um, but you know it could have been weaken him somehow with because I mean Claire is drugged but I mean yeah just physically dragging him do we get a Claire flashback right where, right. where okay and isn't she seems heavily drugged and that's two on she, island flashbacks. She's, in one she's episode. highly influenced, right? She's like, she's like drugged and she's like, uh, she's like, Oh, you're my friend. They're like sitting out on the log and he's like, Oh, I'm here to help you. That's so later. maybe, so, so she's very receptive to Ethan cause she's drugged. So maybe he's just dealing with Charlie and Claire is just going along willingly. Well, my theory is because people have, people disappear, the others were able to go in there and grab people without them knowing it. Um, Cindy, the stewardess, vanished and, without a trace, but I still think she was part of. I think she was another. I yeah. always thought she was. And isn't anyway. there? They, don't they make allusions to the fact that there's multiple footprints? Yes. Yes. So, so he's probably not even working alone because you have Ethan comes back and confronts Jack. Now, Charlie. Who is watching Charlie and Claire at this point? So maybe, so I'm, maybe it's just that Ethan's taking Claire, right? Right. And the others take Charlie or vice versa. He, I'm assuming, oh, yeah, it should be vice versa. I think that maybe Ethan handed off Claire to the others for Juliet to go inspect and do all that stuff. And then he's just grabbing Charlie as a bargaining chip. That's why we see Charlie hanging later. Like he's, it's so Ethan's not taking care of two people. It's all the others to Claire and. So Ethan what about? I think there's there's another uh, abandoned story or storyline or at least tidbit when um when Kate and Jack have split up because apparently Kate is now a tracker. Um, <laughs> um the there's a there's a moment where he hears the screaming, right? Um supposedly Claire screaming in the woods and it was like a blood curdling scream that you wouldn't be able to confuse that with anything else. Right. Um, and it, from the, from the looks of the episode and from the dialogue, it seems like only Jack could hear it. Cause Kate's saying, what, what, you... what do you, what did you hear? I didn't hear anything. So I don't know if that was like a, something that they, it could be abandoned or it could be something leading up to Jack not getting any sleep. Yeah. Cause that's, it sounds the way this episode feels it, we're getting really close to that point. Cause I really remember where Jack was just going off the rails right. and she's like, when was the last time you slept? And she, she slips drugs, sleeping pills into his, uh, into his water or something. 
and he goes out for something like 14 hours or something yeah. crazy. Um, so it could be him going crazy. Jack's already seen his dad on the island by this point. Yes, he has. Um, right. So his his mind I, I isn't all that, there. I don't think I think that was a smoke monster though. But it's one of those things that's like I mentioned earlier. Like it could be an abandoned storyline, but we could also fill the gaps in ourselves and kind of create our own scenarios. So right. Ethan might not. We they may have made it so we thought Ethan was superhuman and that might have been a storyline that the others were superhuman but you can go back and watch other episodes and say no Ethan was with Charlie and the others took Claire to the to the uh the medical staff the Kadu what is it the Kadushes what is that thing the what's the what's the medical bunker the, uh, the staff dude from now on I spent to call it the Kadushes cuz that sounds what is really that cool. thing? <laughs> Isn't that what it's called the two the two snakes that come together the Hydra. No, the, the no. Hydra is the island with all the... Yeah. the Hydra's yeah. got a multi-head... Uh, oh, dragon. you're talking about the, the medical staff symbol. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Where Juliet is when she I'm took a... a, a yeah, I'm not a I think it's called Caduceus. I, I could be It wrong. is. It's absolutely the Caduceus. Okay. There so, you go. <laughs> so, so, so Ethan, like, they could have set up that he was superhuman, but after watching the series, us fans could fill in the gaps by just saying he handed off Claire to her and right. he was only dealing with one person. Cause he, we, we had set up that he's that there's more than one person or Alex could have been the one that took Claire. Too. Yeah. Anybody else could have taken Claire and, and he, uh, Ethan only had to deal with one person, but yeah, when I'm watching this episode, it did feel like more like he was superhuman. <laughs> well, then we, we come to the most dramatic scene and it's, uh, it's a scene that I remember the time I, cho I remember choking up with you, you see Charlie hanging from the tree uh, Jack grabs him. Kate climbs a tree. She's trying to cut the thing down. Jack, uh, Charlie's not breathing. Jack's trying to bring him back to life. Kate's like, let it go. Stop. We know Jack's not going to stop. Yeah. He does stop. And then you had the music playing and it was just like, oh my life God. Death is playing. Yeah. So it's emotional scene. I mean, it was just, I mean, it was what it was. I think it was the first time I really got choked up watching Lost. I mm -hmm. did. I, I did too. It, ha it actually happened when I was rewatching it again too. Yeah. And I actually, I do have a crazy crackpot theory to throw it back to Jay and Jack times. Okay. I think uh, that there was a point in writing the script for season one where they didn't know what the hell they're going to do with Charlie. I think Charlie died. I think that was the point of that scene was that he actually died. The music was playing. But yeah. when, when else when else in the rest of the entire series did that music pop up and somebody not die? Yeah, that's, that's true. So what if this particular scene was actually and it originally intended for Charlie's character to die, but to be revived in some way or fashion by the island? Well, hmm. definitely, definitely the island brought him back. I would think. Yeah, I, I could see that. And I could see Charlie, because the way he acts when he's done with it, where he doesn't right. talk and he's kind of quiet, he seems a little changed. Um, well, I think it is, it, he it, failed to protect Claire in his mind. So, yeah. Could be. Could but it was, be. It was, it was during it, the it, rewatch, it, you're going to have to look for signs of that. Signs of, 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 of Charlie actually died and came back. Well, it wasn't that when he finally died. It was he was always meant to die anyway, right? That, that's uh... and he seemed content with it. Yeah. Well, I, I so he I kinda probably remember. since he's already died once. <laughs> I I, I kind of remember going back. I'm trying to trying to think of when it was there. I think there was like I think uh, what's his name did uh, Lindelof had an interview where he even admitted he didn't know what the hell he wanted to do with with Charlie's character. And I think there was a couple of, of like scripts that were written that he was supposed to die on the pilot and this was you know there's all these different things that are out there. So uh, may, maybe that was the case. Maybe that was just kind of like a, a potential way out, but then as the show gained in popularity, so did Charlie. You know, I mean hey, Charlie he, was, he was a, a very popular club. very popular character. One of my right. favorites. Who knows? Uh, yeah. But, but again, JJ uh, up here. JJ Abrams, yeah. Well, yeah, okay. maybe Lindelof. Lindelof, Lindelof. might be more loose lipped. Actually, I have Lindelof's number here somewhere. Maybe I can text him. <laughs> 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 Did um, you kill that some bitch the season? Uh, he's, season he's one. To, he's to, <laughs> you know I'll send him an email. But you know, okay. This is a cool thing about this scene too. You, you mentioned before how it kind of it, it gives a lot of sadness because there, there was a, there was a moment like there's there's this this 
this helpless moment where there's like this flailing of the arms of Kate as she turns away from um, from Jack trying to revive him, and she's just got her hands up in there. It's like an iconic scene. Like you actually, I, I I will always remember that side of Kate because rarely do you see Kate get sad or yeah. angry or angry maybe, but like she was helpless, right? Like she had there's there's nothing that she could do to 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 resolve the scenario. But if you, the flip side of it all, like if you go to the other you know hunting party there's a scene where when when uh when Locke predicts the weather as boone says it's gonna rain in one minute give or take a few seconds blah, blah, blah. and all of a sudden he starts downpouring like the heaviest downpour of the face of the planet and he has that complete adverse you know um reaction where he's got his hands out and look up in the air just smiling like loving it right so it was, it was just a really cool kind of like um yin to the yang right so you had one of the hunting parties was was it was in, in complete euphoria when the other one was in complete despair? But I, I can remember saying, "Don't kill Charlie! No, not Charlie! No, not Charlie!" So yeah, I was gl- I was glad at the time, and I'm still to this day glad that they didn't kill him off that when they, the way I, I, I was I was upset when he got killed off when he did. Yeah, I, I loved his character. I loved him and Hurley together. They were always great together. But I just and that's I, the most heartbreaking scene about Charlie's death because I really didn't have any issues. Uh, when Charlie died, but it's when everybody came back from that mission and they're giving all this information out about what happened and where everything and what they needed to do next. And the whole time Hurley's saying, where's Charlie? And no one's yeah. paying attention to him. Uh-huh. And he's like, guys, where's Charlie? And they like, he's like yelling. And then that's, that was the most heartbreaking part. Yeah. Was yeah. yeah. Cause they work so well together. They did. And then <laughs> there was a funny line where Kate says, because uh, she's talking to Shannon, she goes, Kate tells Shannon, if there's anyone on this island your brother is safe with, it's Locke. Mm-hmm. So they had to know they were going to kill off Boone. <laughs> yep. Pretty soon. Complete because red shirt. That was like, because you're thinking, yeah. yeah, you're safe with Locke. No. No, you leave. Leave Boone. Leave Boone. And then we find out that Locke mysteriously finds a hatch because Locke not only can uh, the, uh, Boone, he's terrible at everything, but he can't catch a flashlight either. I got, <laughs> I, I got to say this scene, I, watching it again, you know, it, it's been years. In, in, I completely forgot and didn't realize until the moment I was watching it, this, this, this rewatch that that was the point in which we find the hatch. So yeah. I, that, it may have gotten me to like maybe want to keep watching this again. <laughs> like I, I, I had that, I had that, that, that feeling like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It, it, I think I've already swore a couple times. Okay, yeah. cool. I'm like, it, it, oh yeah, it, it's, it's the freaking hatch. This is so good. And like, I was like, and that's the end of the show. Damn it. <laughs> like, you know, not, not lost. I said this before. <laughs> like, the hardest thing about doing this rewatch is I'm only doing two at a time because I don't want to yeah. get confused. Yeah. which episodes and it's like well the next one sucked so <laughs> actually i didn't i didn't i didn't i didn't, I didn't hate this what well, was any more thoughts on uh all those cowboys uh, have daddy issues yeah the only thing i wanted to mention that it was written by javier grillo mark's watch and he uh uh is currently like the showrunner for the dark crystal and the dark crystal on netflix is amazing it's so good. I haven't watched if, it yet. If I had, if I had time, I would podcast about it. Really? Um, if you're, if you're a fan of the movie, uh, you're going to love it. I'm a big fan of the movie. Um, and Stevie, my wife, um, you guys knew that the, the, the viewers probably don't know that. Uh, my wife, Stevie cannot stand when I watch the dark crystal, it puts her to sleep. She thinks she thinks it's boring. She can't get into it. We started watching the series and she's, looking up articles on it and stuff. And we ended up watching the series, which is a prequel. And then we watched the movie after and she sat through the whole movie. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, it, uh, uh, it's just a reason to get people to go. Well, two people on the the RCAD watch it and they, they, highly of it. It makes the movie better. Like, I mean, you guys, if, if you're a fan of Lost, I would say you might be a fan of Dark Crystal. A lot of characters, uh, a lot of adventure uh, storylines all come together. Uh, the performances are great. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Check nice. it out. All right. Yeah. Hey, guys. Um, 
not because this next episode wasn't so great and I don't really like it so much, but um, I do have to bail. <laughs> <laughs> It's all um, right. So for people who I haven't talked to in forever who might be watching this or seeing me the first time, uh, I did have a, a second child and he's uh, starting to thrash up in his, in his crib. I have to take care of him. Almost daughter. five months now, right? Uh, in five days, four, six days, he'll be, he'll be five Man. months. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I do. I do have to go. He's he's yeah, he's completely thrashing around right now. I got to take care of my kid. It's great to see you, though, Ralph. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, Jack, for having me. I'm going to come back and do nice another I would love Go to take, come back to another episode if you'll have me. Oh, we'll have you. Yeah. Go All take right. care of your kid. Stop talking Bye. to us. <laughs> right, leave thing? Is he going to leave his thing off? Shit, sorry. How, how do you turn this thing off? Uh, I'll just I'll just remove you from the stream. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> right. the middle of, the middle of the night, you're going to see him walking through, scratching his ass. <laughs> yeah, that's something I don't need to see. Uh, so next, we have whatever the case may be. Um, not your favorite episode. Uh, you know, what's funny is, uh, one, uh, the first thing that came to mind when you mentioned the title was, Oh, this is the one with the butt cracks in the briefcase. <laughs> and that's, that's the one thing I remember was, is the opening sequence where Sawyer and Kate are, uh, swimming and they find the briefcase. Um, well, you, I did have a quick, does this start the trend where, where guys swim in their jeans? Cause I know oh. that was a, I know we talk. We used to talk about our podcast all the time. It's like, why would you swim in your jeans? But Sawyer's in jeans, and and Kate's not. Yeah. I, the one thing I, I I will say about this episode, I and especially early on with Lost, I think they, I think they use the women actresses a lot to maybe get male viewers to watch. I mean, I think they realized later on they didn't have to do that. But you know, you see Kate wearing yeah, and this Maggie Grace is takes her top off and she's talking to Saeed with, you know, so I think early on, I think the, the actresses were used for, and even the guys too, I guess you got Jack and Sawyer running around with, you know, yeah. but yeah, it definitely became less part of the show. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't, I guess you never really have to do it, but probably back then they thought they had to do it maybe to get it. They didn't yeah. know what they had yet. So yeah. I just want to put that out there. I, I, that's what I thought was going on. But they did. They do find. Uh, I, I I like how Sawyer goes back to get the guy's wallet. He goes, "Well, he ain't gonna need it anymore." And then they find the case, which is we're trying to figure out what's what's the deal with the case. I'm still trying to figure out. So that they must have been sitting in front of uh, the marshal and Kate, the two people that were dead, right? Um, maybe behind, because well, the plane the plane split off behind Kate. Right. So if they're sitting in front, but you always put your luggage, any carry on you, you, anything small you put, if you put on your seat, it's in front of you. That's right. So it can't be I don't know where I don't know where those seats came from because <laughs> they're just kind of because you think they would come out from where the plane was torn up, right? Which was behind. Kate, like right behind Kate, because she remembers looking. We remember seeing her look back, and then right. the, the front splits off, which is well in front of them. Right. So unless these seats became unlodged and came out, or or dislodged, or I don't know. Somehow the case, because they were the case looked like it was right under the seats, right? And how did the case not? How did it not fall out? I don't know. I mean, it, it, there's no bottom, right? The the seats looked like they got ripped off. Yeah. Um, we, it's one of those things we just have to accept, I think. I think so. And I feel like I feel like those kind of Halliburton cases, they're airtight, would probably float. So they're yeah. probably like, oh, we need to pin it down somehow. Let's stick some chairs down there. Yeah. <laughs> and I it's, mean, so it's, it, it made for an interesting episode. I, I like how Sawyer was trying to get the case open and then Michael and uh, – and Hurley walked by him just laughing because you you got the key. Get it. <laughs> yeah. One thing that did bother me is because Kate is athletic. Mm -hmm. Kate is Kate, Kate climbs trees. She's she's athletic. She's fast. I don't think Sawyer Sawyer was was up on top of that. I don't think he would have been able to catch her. What do you think? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. I think she's and then it was mentioned in the last episode that she's a tracker, so she yeah. can move over rough terrain. Yeah. Sawyer's just kind of a con man he's more right 
Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, my, my real only issues with this episode is that, um, this, like, I know every twist and turn in the flashback, so it's not terribly interesting to me anymore. Right. Um, so sitting through the flashback was kind of like boring. It's nothing against the episode. Um, cause I don't think it's a bad episode. It's just one that I feel like it's not interesting info. Um, it doesn't really affect like the only thing we get out of it is that she will do anything to get that airplane. Um, we don't find out until later flashback who the airplane belongs to. Right. So that's a little more interesting than this one because we're like, oh, she's just trying to get the airplane. So I don't I, I don't care. Like as soon as the bank robbery happens, I already know that she's in on it Right before they even as soon as the scene starts, I already know that reveal. So now I'm sitting through a thing where I already know the reveal. And it's kind of like just just stop trying to build up. Like I don't need to feel like any of the any of the suspense because there's no suspense anymore. Well, to me, I've always thought that the Marshall and Kate there was something more there. I, I think we talked yeah. about it in our episode, that, and that she uses her charms and her looks to get what she, to get guys to do what she wants. And this episode basically showed that's what she does. Which would have been perfect if they had if they let us know that. The, but again, it's one of those things where okay, the way the marshal was acting, the way he was, there was something he felt there was something more between. Kate had used him something somewhere, yeah. there, and he felt hurt from it. So maybe they were going to show us that. Maybe they decided to drop it and say, okay, it's up for you to figure out. But that's like I said he, on the island. She really doesn't. She tries to use Jack that way to get the key. You know, and, and Sawyer even says something, oh, she got to you or something like that. But I don't think it comes into play with her character on the island. She's she's you not know, that way on the island. You know what I think would be interesting? Is if the Marshall played the Nathan Fillion character. Yes. Like that would be cool because they were they were about to get married and she was a runaway bride. Right. He found out about her. I think that would have been. I think that would have been great. Uh, I don't even think you would have to change that script at all, but just put that character into that where they were in love at one point. And if you have that where she ditches him, that would like make a huge world of difference. Explain why she's character. Yeah, obsessed yeah. with bringing her in, and why he's obs- like why he like because it definitely feels personal. Yes, uh, him and Kate's relationship definitely feels personal. Uh, he, yeah, he does feel betrayed, or there's something there where he's will do anything to take care of this this yeah. lady. Uh, so I wonder if that's something that was possibly pitched, and maybe the marshal, the, the actor couldn't play. Maybe he couldn't do it. Maybe. So maybe. once again, maybe we could fill in the gaps where she did this with before with someone else, and that could have been the marshal. But I mean, God, that would be great, especially that late into the series, because that was like episode, that was like probably season three, I think. Yeah, but somewhere is, around there, because we like, started getting flash forwards after that. Yeah, but what I like about the flash, the flashbacks is especially like what you see with Jack and Locke, and it it really develops their characters, what who they are. Yeah. You, okay, okay, that's why Locke is a terrible yeah, Locke doesn't have the chop. That's why Jack is the way he is. That's why Sawyer is the way. This episode with Kate, um she's not she's not that I mean later I, I, it's I don't interesting think it, that it, way on the island. It presents her as a victim at the beginning, but she's really like an instigator. So that that kind of lets us know a little bit about her character. Uh it, it, the fact that it also lets us know that she's willing to do anything uh, to get what she needs or wants. Um, there's a there's a scene where Jack is talking to Kate, and Jack's yelling, of course, and <laughs> he says he just wants one thing. Just tell me one thing that's real. And she tells a story about how she was a tracker, and she learned it from her dad and all that stuff and she's like that's real and then i'm thinking 
is it? <laughs> is she <laughs> is she just lying so that it shuts Jack up because she just doesn't want to deal with Jack? So she'll do anything to to get him to stop uh, interrogating oh, her. We do see later on flashback that she did go off with her dad. Do we? I th I'm pretty sure we saw that. Okay. Or she at least. I want to believe. I want to believe that happened. I guess well, I'll find yeah, out. Yeah, they rewatch to keep an eye out for that. But uh, I don't. It's one of those things where, like, if it doesn't happen and they don't have that flashback, then once again she's just lying to get what she wants. Is what right. which, to keep Jack off her back. She'll say anything uh, to to kind of get away from any situation. So it, it'll be interesting to see if that's like uh, her just lying to get her way. Uh, which is why she works with Sawyer, I guess, so much because <laughs> she's yeah. pretty much a con woman, right? We've already seen her uh, pretending to be other people, um, with her wigs and stuff. So it's uh, it's interesting. It's it's yeah. I, I don't think I have a problem with this episode. It's just the for me the flashback um, isn't terribly interesting because the whole the whole thing rests on the fact that it's a it's supposed to be like this thriller and this suspense but i already know she's a bad guy so yeah that's true yeah um but you do have this the starting of the the side shannon relationship yeah yeah it was uh i was surprised how early it happened but i guess uh that relationship ends at the beginning of season two yeah it um, does. and I, it would, yeah and as chris mentioned like uh, the discovery of the hatch. I think this was episode what eleven and twelve. Yes. And God, I had no idea the hatch was that early on. I and didn't I either. I had forgotten about it. Also. Yeah, it, it was crazy how early that happened. And I was like, oh, they're setting up Boone's relationship with Locke early. And then I was like, oh, and then they immediately find the hatch. And I guess it does take them a while to dig out the hole and and you know lie to people about it. And then you know the finale is the the thing that you know with the dynamite and stuff. So yeah, I guess it does. They, they do deal with the hatch for a while. I just, for some reason, didn't think it was that early. Maybe I'm still I in the mode of watching it week by week. Like it took, you yeah. know, 11 weeks I'd, to get to that point. I'd forgotten about when, when they separate, oh, that's right. We find out they find the hatch. Yeah. I, I was like, it was coming back to me and I was like going, Oh my God. But then you, you know, Kate wants the key and they have to go dig up the Marshall's grave. And uh, she, she does a sleight of hand. But Jack's too smart. And, and it's, I think Jack just wants her to be honest. He just keeps saying, just tell me the truth. Just, you know, I don't understand what the big deal, why she couldn't just say, Hey, there's a plane in there that belonged to someone I know. And I want it before Sawyer gets it. Yeah. It, it's almost like it would be way less trouble just to say, uh, uh, yeah. It's, I guess it makes the story less interesting, but yeah, but that's the whole thing with lost is a lot of people withhold information from each other. And you're, you're kind of like, man, if these people all just work together, it'd be make things so much easier. Which well, you can see Boone and, and, and lock are not telling anyone they found the hatch. And no. He, and he said, they fact, say it. brings the ax. He goes, they would see you goes, oh, I don't think so. And he goes, well, what is it? Yeah. Didn't think so. Or as you, we, we talked about earlier, why does lock take, why does Locke take um, Boone? Well, because he thinks he can mold him into something, yeah. you know, to do He's what he wants. Him. Right. Yeah. And then Locke says, you know, or Boone is asking why they take a different route and he doesn't want people to start following him or suspecting anything. Right. Uh, so it's kind of, it's kind of interesting that, um, that, that it's all of a sudden everybody has their secrets for some reason. Um, but yeah, the Kate secret doesn't make any sense. Uh, I mean, it, I don't even know if she says it was the marshals. Did she say it was the marshals? No, she just said the case said belonged to me. Yeah. She, no, she, she eventually tells she, I think she did tell she did tell Jack it belonged to the marshal. Cause she said it has the four guns and, and some cash or did she tell Sawyer that? Mm-hmm. I just watched it. I can't remember. I think it was Jack. She tells because <laughs> Jack Jack actually goes and plays poker with uh, he bluffs Sawyer, saying, "You know, hey, you, you're going to give me the case because why? Because I won't give you the antibiotics. You know, you're going to beg me to cut the arm off, and uh, you you wouldn't do that." He goes, "Bet me," because <laughs> Sawyer is right. Jack, there's no way Jack would do that. Yeah, 
There's no but way we, Jack would say. We, we as the audience know that Jack yeah. would never let anybody uh, get hurt or, or do any unnecessary operations. But, but <laughs> Sawyer, Sawyer, Sawyer doesn't know that enough. takes the bait. And uh, we also find out the safe deposit box that has the toy plane is 815. Ah. So I didn't really. That, I, the uh, one of the things that we it's we have to remember as an audience is we watch this on a weekly basis, but um, each episode is essentially one day. So right. these people have only been on the island together for eleven days, right. and so uh, I mean, Kate probably just doesn't feel it's necessary. Like I've only known you for eleven days. I still probably think that we're going to get off this island soon. There's got to be some rescue party. Uh, I, there's no reason for me to tell you what's in this case. It's my case. So it could just be that. But she needed Jack's help. Yeah. Because she didn't know where the marshal was buried. Yeah. If she knew where the marshal was buried, she never would have asked Jack. Yeah. But I, I did find it. I did find it. But keep going back to it. There's no reason. This, I get it. But there's no reason for Kate to say, it is, yeah, there's a plane in there. There's a toy plane that belonged to a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. and, and I want it because he passed away or something like that. But at the end, she has to tell him. She said, it's belonged to the man I love, but belonged to the man I love. It belonged to the man I killed. And so now she has I, to say that. Go ahead. I can't stand that scene. <laughs> it's, too much, it's too much. It's too much. It's It feels way melodramatic. Um. I don't know if it's the acting or the directing or the writing. I know that Damon Lindelof co-wrote this one with Jennifer. I forget who uh, anyone can go to IMDb and check, but I feel like that whole scene is one of those ones where I'm like, it's so over the top. And I know she loved, what's his name? Tommy. Was that the, the yeah, it was, it was Tom. It was Tommy. I think. Yeah. And it's like, I understand that she loved him. And, but her just like yelling at the top of her lungs, I guess it's TV and it needs to be dramatic, but, and this is kind of the, this is kind of the climax of this episode and it, it, they want to make sure that you get that in your brain that she loves somebody and she killed that person. Right. So you want to like hammer that home, but there's something about them. Like, Oh my gosh, it's a little, it's a little too over the top. <laughs> so it, there, there's something that all, that's always bothered me about that scene. Um, I feel like they didn't know how important to play it. And so they played it the most, like this is the most important thing ever. But as the show goes on, I feel like Tommy's not as important to Kate's backstory right. as, as, as this scene would lead us to believe. But that's the problem with shooting stuff out of order. That's the problem. You know, you have, you know, this story, that part, that whole Tommy thing doesn't come up till either later this season or next season. I think it's might be season two. Yeah, so it's it's one of those things where it's like, you know, couldn't she couldn't she have said <laughs> it belonged to the man I love and he died? Uh, I th it's more dramatic saying kill. But if if I'm if I'm Kate and she's she lies all the time. Yeah, she yeah. Her, she, felt, she felt that Jack deserved to know the truth. Yeah, that's the thing. Maybe because he's been writing her so hard about her just telling him All right. stuff. And uh, I guess we would need to know like what kind of person Kate is. Um, so now we just assume she's a murderer uh, when we find out that it was sort of in a car accident. Right. But, but the later and episode leads us to believe that it's just, she feels guilt of him dying. Right. Like, like we all assumed, oh, she shot this dude and <laughs> took well, his airplane. We, we see her in the, the bank. She shoots three guys. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's one of those things where they, where the flashbacks are used to set up like people's backstories. And then the next time you see the uh, flashback, it kind of flips the tables and you kind of get a different, um, you're like, oh, maybe they're not so bad. Like it's like the gin and sun thing like their relationship keeps flip flopping back and forth through the flashbacks where you're like, Oh, you start off you're like, Oh, Jen's an asshole. And they're like, Oh, well, son's kind of a jerk. And they're like, no, Jen's kind of an asshole. And then you're like, Oh, but son did this. And it's one of those things where it's like back and forth, back and forth. And so they did a lot of that throughout the series where it's like, 
oh, Kate's a cold blooded murderer. Oh no, she has a soft side. And then, right. oh no, she's kind of, so it kind of, it kind of makes you think about the characters a little bit more, I guess. I think and, what frust from Jack's side, what frustrates him is he gave Kate a clean, like I said, I know, I know you're, you were with the marshal, you were under arrest. Yeah. I know that you were arrested for some reason and he gave her a clean, you know, just be honest with me. And she's never, it's like, she can't trust him. Yeah. And once again, like I said, it's, it's only been 11 days. I know they've been through a lot together, you know, uh, the plane crash, the, her sewing him up and, and the marshal, like all of that stuff. But, uh, uh, so you got to remember that, um, no one's really changed yet by the Island. I think except Locke. Uh, yeah. it's, it's one of those things where it's like, it's been 11 days. Like, it, you know, it's like a week and a half. Right. Like you're not full in, like, she's not immediately going to be like a cool person. Um, it, it's got to take, it's got to take a while for her to get to that point. Um, uh, it, it helped with Locke a little bit more because it was a physical, tangible transformation. And it, it's just taken the island a little bit longer to kind of work its way through other people. <laughs> and, and, you know, Jack's obviously trying to get through it, but he can't. Uh, it almost takes him the whole series to get fixed. Yeah. I don't think it's until the end where he's able to finally just let go and yeah. say, he, he puts the plug back in and he, he's like, I can't, I'm not, I'm not the one it takes him all six seasons. That's his story. All six seasons to realize he's not the one he hands it off to Hurley and then he's able to be at peace. Right. So uh, it takes different people varying amount of times to, to kind of get through it. And for Kate, we're still kind of early in her journey. Uh, we, we, we're just discovering that even though this is her second flashback, I think we're still yeah, discovering yeah. that she, you know, who she really is and what, what needs to change. And I think it's not until she gets off the Island and starts taking care of Aaron. Right. Where she starts figuring her life out. Right. And, uh, it could be just one of those things where it's like the Island's like, I can't fix this lady. <laughs> she's kind of she's kind of broken like and, i got the guy to walk again that's, that's yeah I mean. yeah so it, it's it's one of those things where we we all have kind of weird different paths but but yeah her her story is kind of like she kind of needs to fix herself unfortunately she's hanging out with jack who needs to fix everybody <laughs> you know and, so and, and sawyer who's a mess yeah it's sawyer who who probably doesn't need fixing I think he's perfectly happy with his life. Uh, but I mean, he definitely does have issues. He, he has right. that, that, that note that he's struggling yeah. with and uh, he's able to get through that. As soon as he kills, what's his nuts? <laughs> um, Cooper from emergency. Yeah. Uh, who's the, 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 the real Sawyer. Yeah. Real Sawyer. Yeah. Yeah. After that, then we get, he gets into like, hanging out with Juliet and joining Dharma and he has his place. He has something else to focus on. Like the right. island brought him his closure. And so from that point on, he's able to, you know, move on with his life and be happy um, until the incident. But, <laughs> but still <laughs> it's one of the things where it's like, it's, it's funny watching all of these people's journey and to see when they get fixed. Um, like I mentioned, Jin and son, their relationship is back and forth on who's the a-hole or not. Um, um, they finally at one point get reunited and they're happy and they have the baby and everything's good. So it's, it's interesting how, how, you know, the Island will eventually fix everybody, but it just takes varying amounts of time. I think Jack, Jack's stubbornness gets in the way of that. That's why it takes him all six seasons to be fixed, but it uh, definitely does. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's funny. It's it's a weird show. It's you can sit. And, I mean, we've been talking for an hour and fifteen minutes or so, and it's. Uh, I'm not even. Go. I, I want. I want to talk about how Rose, uh, Rose, Rose was <laughs> giving uh, Charlie some tough love. I mean, he, he guy almost yeah. died. He still got the things. He he failed, and you know he he you know in his mind he failed to protect Claire, and she gets some tough love. And then at the end, she basically says, you know, hey, it's not your fault. Yeah. You know, we nobody blames you. 
But then she she still believes her husband's still alive. She she sounds like she's seen something too. Like you remember when um, Locke says, "I've looked into the eye, the heart, or the eye of the island, and it was beautiful, or it was good, or whatever." He says, "Yeah, um, it's been so long since I was." But uh, I feel like something similar happened with Rose because she the way the way she's very calm. She's like the only calm person on the island. Right. Everyone's wound up. Um, she's at peace. She's she knows one hundred percent that Bernard's alive, and she goes over and talks to Charlie. And uh, and you think uh, you're the only one that's had issues? We've but yeah, issues. she gets him. She gets him to to see the right path, and right. it's almost like she's sort of a Jacob like character. I always so, liked your character. I always liked your character. I never. But that's what always made me think that she worked for Dharma and all this. Because I never trusted her. Yeah. Because she was she was calm. She wasn't stressed out like everybody else out. Yeah. She 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 honestly believed her husband was alive. How would she know? What's funny is you you when you see the flashback in the pilot episode, and there's turbulence, and she's pretty calm then. Yeah. Almost like later on when we get the the uh, Ajira. 316 flight where yeah. they all know they're going back to the island and Lupitas comes out and says, Oh, we're not going to, we're Shanghai. not going to Guam. Well, yeah. Um, it almost feels like that. Like when the turbulence is going, like Rose seems kind of calm about it. Like she knows it's happening, but, but uh, that's just, I guess her character, but I, I always liked her character. That's another person didn't watch the show. Yeah. She didn't watch the show. And then we, we end with Shannon singing a, f- a song in French. Yes. It, it reminded me of, I don't know what the song is, but it reminded, reminded me of Across the Sea, that song. Somewhere Across the Sea. Oh, uh, yeah, I think, yes. There was a little bit of that to it, but I don't think it was that. Um, her storyline's interesting, I think. Because she says, she says earlier, because she just doubts herself. Right. She says, I don't know French. I took it in high school and blah, blah, blah. And she, she, she almost is afraid to be herself. She's kind of self-absorbed and wants to give off a certain um, air. Like she's like, she's self-important. Um, <clears throat> and she feels like she's not useful. She's afraid to go be herself and contribute. Well, she almost uh, wants to hurt people before they hurt her. Yeah, I think that, and I think, yeah. you, and you see in her flashback why, but you also see Boone has his look like he's just jealous. Yeah, now he's, and we find out, you know, yeah, later we find on out that, why. <laughs> yeah, we find out later that he, you know, there's a little more there than I think he cared for more than just brother and sister. Yeah, <laughs> I think I, I think that's the direction yep. they were going, but that's how yeah. it ended. I, you know, obviously, if you, you're judging the two, I go with Cowboys. Uh, if, have best all the best cowboys have daddy issues over this one, but I thought this was a good episode. Yeah, I think the I think the problem is it doesn't the flashback isn't great for uh, rewatching. No, because the the cowboy one it's it's the flashback with Jack and his dad. Even though we know that story, it's still compelling to watch. Um, it's still really good drama. It's really good scenes. It's well done. And then with the Kate stuff, it's like we already know. Like we, it's like well, it's more like we we. Eh, it just doesn't. The suspense doesn't work. One thing that bugged me about the bank scene is it went on for it went on for a while. Yeah. No cop showed up, and nobody else showed up to the bank. Yeah. So, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's like it's all suspense based. Right, and we already we don't we know. I mean, I know I know the time frame. It's probably only yeah. five to ten minutes, but still, yeah. Banks. I mean, I don't know about New Mexico, but people are going in and out of banks <laughs> nonstop everywhere I've been. But that's it, and that's all I got. But uh, anything else? No, no. Well, why, uh, why don't you tell them what what's going on in your world besides uh, Dungeon and Dragons? Uh, go to follow me at Casino Skunk wherever right right wherever there. you can do that. Yeah. Wherever you can go to to follow Casino Skunk, that'll be me. Um, I have uh, I I produce a couple of podcasts, um, Darmalars, which I mean, 
there needs to be lost stuff to happen for us to get together. It's just so hard to get together. And there's, you know, um, I don't know if I want a reboot of lost or not a reboot or a remake or a sequel or anything like, I don't know if I want more lost. The but rebooting there, BSG. Yeah. But if there is more lost, I mean, Dharma Lars will come back in a big, big, bad way, but it's kind of hard now to find, except for doing a rewatch to find some sort of lost content. Um, and I don't know if I want to do a full rewatch. <laughs> You're crazy, obviously, <laughs> for wanting to do the whole thing. Well, that, that's where the name Crazy Hank comes from. Yeah. And then uh, there's also um, another podcast I do with my friend Kevin called All Right, Let's Do a Podcast. That's about everything. Anything that you can think of, it'll be about that. Um, and then, of course, the Kaiju podcast with me and Jorge, um, who's right back there. I got my little Jorge pop, which is weird because... It's, it's our friend. <laughs> it's, it's just like, but I have a. It's so weird because he's just our friend. Um, but and yeah, he's, just, we talk he's about, just he's just such a. He's just yeah, a guy. Yeah, he's just. I mean, I mean, sound, I don't mean sound that way, but he's just. Yeah, but I have him immortalized in plastic. Yeah, or vinyl, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but I mean, I want to. I want this guy to be my friend. To be honest with you. Sir Isaac Lime, the Otter Pop. <laughs> um, no, but we do a show about like Godzilla, King Kong, Mothra. It's called Kaiju Podcast. Um, if you just type in my name in in iTunes, you'll find all my shows. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, go to casinoskunk.com. Um, the VHS stuff, the VHS dude, uh, it came from the VCR. Um, it's done. I just, I, I quit it. It's, it's oh, crazy. really? Yeah. It, it was the biggest thing I had. I had like something like 75,000 followers, followers on Vine. And I think I have like 23,000 followers on Instagram. Yeah, I saw that. I but I just like, that. it's not creative enough for me. Um, I you, ran, have, you ran out of ideas to. Well, I mean, you're just, it's, you're going through tapes and finding funny clips and posting them. And cool, that gets followers. But then what? There's not really a creative outlet. It's more of like, like uh, data mining. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you just sitting there watching, just awful right. stuff. So um, there's a project I have in the works that I'm really excited about, and it's going to take up a lot of my time. Um, if you go to my Patreon page, I'll have a video up on that. Um, I'll, I'll make that available to everybody for free. If you, if you like any of the shows I do, uh, my Patreon show has a bunch of different subject matters. I talk about Star Wars. I talk about Green Lantern and comics and, and uh, Lost. We have uh, some of our panels. Uh, a couple of our panels are up there um, that we did, including not this past summer, but the summer before. Uh, that's not available anywhere. It's only on my Patreon. And that's only a buck. A buck gets you all the episodes. So check out that and you'll you can show you'll you know. can show this if you want. Yeah, but I mean no, I'm gonna have this you I'm gonna point this to your YouTube. Okay. But uh but um yeah, you guys didn't you guys didn't have a recording of the the con from two years ago and I recorded it, so I'm like cool, exclusive. <laughs> um uh this year's panel wasn't exclusive because it's it's most of mostly your audio, but um, yeah, the patreon.com slash casino skunk gets a buck, give it a shot. Um, and you'll see what that new project is. Oh, this is important. So I don't know the next time I'll talk to you. Um, I'm planning on covering, uh, a weekly, uh, weekly episodes covering the Mandalorian. Okay. And the guest lineup I have is killer. <laughs> All right. The, the uh, uh, it's, it's going to be a really, really interesting show. I got, yeah, it's going to be fun. You want to give some of the names? I mean, I can, I, I mean, let's see if these are people, you know, I, I think there's one. Okay. There's one that, you know, <laughs> and he's not on this episode today <laughs> and he doesn't go on Twitter a lot. Uh, Jay. Um, I don't know who that is. Uh, I talked to Axel. 
Axel's going to be on. Uh, Matt from Owen and Brew Barbecue. So those okay. are people. Those are people that I, you. I know all three. You of know those all people. those people. Um, uh, man, I can give you the whole list. I, I, I feel like some people are going to be be could possibly back out, but this is what this is this is what's tentative right now. Um, Rob Schraub. I don't know if you know Rob Schraub. Uh, he wrote the film Monster House. He does a lot of. Uh, he's a director. He's I know the doing, name. He's doing the new um, Creep Show for Shutter. Uh, okay. He's agreed. Uh, I briefly brought it up with Jorge Garcia from uh, Hawaii Five O. He's usually pretty good. Uh, I call it H Five O. Pete Pete the retailer from the Star Wars Minute, which is a really popular Star Wars podcast. Uh, uh, Eddie Pence, who is on a podcast called The Ralph Report, which is Ralph Garman's daily podcast. Oh, not, not, not you, huh? No, it's a different Ralph. Um, uh, Tony Thaxton, who's been a guest on my show before, uh, he does a new podcast called Bizarre Albums. If you get a uh, chance, okay. it's amazing. And then um, Steve Zaragoza, who is a part of a, a comedy troupe called The Valley Folk, and their troupe just won NBC's uh, Bringing the Funny. Okay. The, the Jeff Foxworthy, Kenan Thompson, Chrissy Teigen show. Okay. Like, he just won that like this week or a couple weeks ago. Um, so it's a really, really solid lineup. I have room for, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, I have room for one more guest. So we'll see what happens. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe, I can get, maybe I can get you on there. Um, are you going to watch the Mandalorian? I probably will. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying. I'm so I'm falling so far behind on on TV shows right now. Yeah. Just because everything I'm I, I'm I'm trying. Like I said, this one won't come out until well, the it, it, people will see it, but it, it's not coming out until next uh, Thursday because I'm trying to get like two or three ahead just in case something happens. Yeah, and I I can't. You know, I don't want I don't want to miss a week because I promise it would be up every week. So the one thing that's good about these a la carte tra- streaming services is that they put their shows out weekly. They don't drop them all at once. That's what's hard about Netflix is they put all the stuff out at once. So when right. we watch Dark Crystal, we watch just one a day. Um, and they want you to stay. They want you to stay stay subscribed past the month. So the Mandalorian is going to be once a week, spread out over ten weeks. So okay. it's like, well, I can't just get one month, binge it all, and then dump it. Right. Um, so it's nice to be able to go back to that once a week mode. It really works well for podcasting. Oh, it's yeah. def, def, it loss would not have worked if it was, I don't, it, binged. Yeah. Because you, again, what we said earlier, you mess so much. And nobody's on the same page. So you can be coming up with theories about episode two when everybody else is done with the season. Right. So it's like, it's nice to be on the same page and everybody following the same timeline. Yeah, uh, I agree. So if they do do a lost reboot, hopefully it's on some ABC streaming site where they release it once a week. Cause yeah. I don't think I could deal with a binge watch. No, I, I wouldn't be. And, and yeah. Jay has said if, if, cause he's, he's, he's not really into podcasting anymore, but he did say if lost comes back, we will, the lost podcast with Jay and Jack will return. So cool. There you have so that fingers crossed. I mean, I even think if I, it's, even if it's it, bad, you, you, it's you, going, it's going exciting. To it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen probably within the next year. It'll be announced. It's yeah. probably already, it's probably already in the works right now. Disney and plus. Yeah. I, I it think be on that, Disney plus that whole thing with that whole network they're trying to build over there. Even though Disney has that, you know, the, all that, all those old movies and stuff. I, I see that I, it's going to happen and it probably will be on Disney plus. I'll be there. I don't care. Yeah, I, I'm I'm happy with the ending of Lost. I'm happy with how it is. Uh, there's been all kinds of reboots and remakes of movies that I absolutely adore, and when they turn out crappy, they just poof, out of my memory. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah. So, like yeah. So I'm just bring it on. I just yeah. just just make it a, a continuation. Yeah. I just just the only thing that needs to be the same is the island. Right, it could be all new characters. You could have the old characters come back in flashbacks or, it or do it them it. somehow, but it just don't. I mean, just do it. Make sure you have the music, the acting, directing, the writing, all top notch, 
and and do this, the storytelling where you have actually where you care about the characters, not throwing them all at once and just hoping something sticks. I guarantee you, if they do any sort of reboot, I guarantee you, Giacchino would be on it. Would be would demand to do every episode because he did every episode of Lost, and, and that's I, yeah, that's plus right there, yeah. So. I, I I I think enough time has passed where I'm excited. I would be more excited for more Lost. You know, I've done so many rewatches. I just want to see your stuff. Uh, don't start it until after I'm done with this rewatch. Yeah, it yeah. should probably be around March or I think it was May. I thought it. I figured it out, but I, being old, I forget what happens. And yeah, you that. should be good. You should be good. Yeah, cool, man. All right, but always always great talking with you, Ralph. Always yeah. great. Let me know. Let me know when you want to do another one. All right. Uh, I'll be there. People love you. They yeah. ask for you all the time. So I, I don't, I don't, <laughs> sure. I don't, understand, but they, you, you got to have Ralph on. I'm just so it's, yeah. Yeah. I love talking about it. Yeah. I, uh, I guess I can tell everyone uh, Chris's uh, young baby is not quite five months old. He said, had a Taco Bell type explosion in Ooh. his diaper. So yeah, I've been I've been there as a parent and a grandparent. And there's nothing worse than the Taco Bell type explosion. <laughs> he opened the hatch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've done everything you've asked me to do. <laughs> but that's all I got. Again, people right. subscribe. Tell a friend if you if this is the first one you've watched. This is the sixth episode we've done, right? Six. Yeah, I think this is the we've done. And uh, Ralph did the pilot with us. The uh, pilots episode one and two. And we're going to do two episodes a week until we reach the end. So and I did episode one and two and 11 and 12. Right. So you get me a 21 and 22. Is yeah, that right the finale? There. Is that the finale? Sure. Give me the finale. I'll be All back right. for the finale. I'll give you the season one finale. Yeah. You're in. You're in. And then season three, put me in for further instructions. Let's have further, some. Okay, further instructions. You'll have to remind me, but once I, once I get Oh, do you think I need to remind you on that one? No, I don't think so. No. <laughs> I think as soon as you see it coming up, you're going to be like, oh, I better call Ralph. <laughs> All, All right. right. Thanks for having me. Oh, no problem. Take care. All right. Bye.